A number of recent reports have highlighted widespread and often justified concern about children's safety online. The response to this question perhaps explains why. While you're on your MSN or you're on your chat or you're online after school, put your hands up if mum and dads watch everything that you're on. Okay, put your hands up if you're on there and they don't know how, what you're doing. Be honest. Many experts working in the area of online safety recognise that teachers are in a difficult position. There's a very uncomfortable dynamic for teachers, I think, and the dynamic exists because the, the pupils, particularly the older children, actually know more than them about the technology. And I speak as a parent, I speak as an adult myself who works with kids. It's about having the courage to be able to work collaboratively with children and young people to make this something that we share. It's a piece of learning that we do together. This approach is one which schools are learning to adopt. Some of the most far-sighted have appointed an e-safety officer charged with teaching safe use of the internet across the curriculum and acting as a point of contact for victims of cyberbullying. But then I went home and then I'll leave like nasty comments on my pictures or like just leaving my comments in general just being nasty for no apparent reason. And I like got really scared because I thought if I told someone then I'll get bullied even more. Soon all schools will need to appoint an e-safety officer. A one-off lesson on e-safety will not do anybody any good. It's got to be part of the curriculum, it's got to be part of everyday school life. Just the same kind of thing. But in the meantime, what can teachers practically do to promote safe use of the internet? We asked ICT consultant Dr Alan Beecham to come to Rhodesway Secondary School in Bradford to conduct a series of experiments. He's working alongside humanities teacher Haroon Gardi and Year 7 Inclusion Manager Max Crowther. Do you have some experience with the social networking sites then? Uh, no, this is um, sort of a new thing really. I was born before the uh, technology and I'm finding it quite difficult to um, get my head round it. Uh, good to see you, thanks for coming. What we're going to do today is look at some social networking stuff and, and see what you know. Dr Beecham establishes quickly that almost all of the pupils are members of social networking sites. Which ones do you use? Bieber. Bieber. Pixel. Pixel, right, yeah. Facebook. Facebook, you use Facebook. Mm -hmm. Have you got friends that you don't actually know for real? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. How many sort of friends have you got on your site? 200. You've got 200. And most of them people you've just met in cyberspace are people you don't actually know. Yeah. Yeah, most of them. Yeah? yeah? OK, so what we're going to do now then is we're, we're going to look at a profile. How old is she? 14. 14. What sort of stuff does she like doing then? Watching TV. Watching TV. What the students don't know Shopping. is that the profile is fake. Computers? Yeah. That's boring? Yeah. OK. Would you like to meet her? No. No, not at all. Well, that's really unfortunate because I've brought her along with me. Here she is. <laughs> the person behind the profile is not a 14-year-old girl. It's one of their teachers. So, what's this telling you, then? It could be anybody, yeah, right. But before your teacher came in, did you find this reasonably convincing? Yeah? Because she's, like, she's got the phone numbers there. She's, she's got, got her address. Got she's got the address and everything. I'm surprised that they didn't twig that the profile that we made uh, was a made-up one, uh, which they obviously didn't. So, uh, work to be done. Because she's got all that evidence on there. Evidence. We've got evidence on there. I was shocked. I, I thought, thought it was a joke. I was when, disappointed. Yeah. I expected it to be the girl. They would have expected a, a young student to walk in, but the fact that it was a teacher um, was, was shocking, yeah. So, what do you think we've learnt from this, then? Anyone could just get a picture from the internet or something, put it up and be someone who they're not. It's about teaching children about safety in the online space in the same way as we would the, in the offline space. You know, 
don't talk to strangers. Think about the images of yourselves that you're posting up. Understand that this is a digital footprint. This stuff is going to be around forever. Is this what you want people to know about you forever? Remember that people who tell you that they are who they are might not be who they are. She looked young, like, you know, we know um, roughly how old she was. Well, she looked it anyway. And, like, we believed, like, the stuff that she wrote, like, releasing her address and stuff. It's because like, what she wrote is what normally what 14 year olds would write. You'd think it would be the girl, but actually it was a teacher, it just could be anyone sat behind there. In the next experiment, Dr Beecham is interested in just how much information pupils are willing to share online. So what I want to do is to look at those sorts of things that you would put on a profile and just for you to write down those things that you're happy to use and leave off those things that you not happy to use. The pupils are supplied with categories of information, ranging from home telephone number through their hobbies to the social network trinity of ASL or age, sex, location. You put name in it, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. You put age in it. DOB. DOB. Date of birth, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyone can get your email address and then start talking to you and. Sending you emails. And yeah, then you can block the emails. Yeah, but then they add you on MSN, you talk to them, get to know them. If you like them, you like them. If you don't, you block them and delete them. What, if they're paedophiles? Then I'm you block them and delete them. Yeah, but you but how do you know? <laughs> what about school names? Do you think you should put what school names? I know, because they can track you down. There is some recognition that giving away personal information can be dangerous. Um, a photo? Would you put a photo yourself? No. Because, uh, no. No, but, but if they you do... They won't see you around. They could save them and put them onto, like, phones. They might see you around school, like, stalking and okay. Um, OK, guys, can you finish off what you're doing in a moment? And then can you just turn your chair so you're looking this way, please? Have I got two volunteers from this group to come out and tell me about what you've put on here? The first group were happy to post information in 17 of the 19 categories. Put your name on. You're quite happy to put your name on. Yeah. Why would you put your name on? Obvious question. Because you don't want someone calling you or you something. You just, no. You'd like them to say your name. You'd like them to say your name. So you put your full name on. OK. Your email address. Why would you give them your email address? Um, because then they could talk to you and stuff and... Well, can't they talk to you through the networking site? Um, and they could, but like, it's like more... It takes time and then on MSN it's like um, it's quicker. Right, so you've given them your name, you've it's given them your, your personal email, and it's, it's more private. The second group is slightly more cautious, but will still share information in 15 of the 19 categories. Date of birth, quite happy with that? Yeah. Yeah? Uh, for most of you, it'll be 14, and you're quite happy to reveal that you're 14-year-old. Yeah, OK. Why does this matter? Right, well, in the best interests of Blue Peter, there's one I prepared earlier. That's what I'd be prepared to put on. I altered name to be just my first name. And I think you have to be careful even with that. I have to give, if I'm going to use a social network site, people something with which they can engage, because if I'm looking for friends, then I need to give them something. So I'm quite happy to talk generally about... Dr Beecham telly. considers that only six categories uh, of information are safe to reveal. They are first name, hobbies, favourite celebrity, TV programme and movie, and favourite quote. We are kind of shocked as a group because you don't really think about what consequences and stuff would happen, but... We just put, like, what we want to put down, but we should think before we write. One of the things that, that worries me slightly would be, in hobbies, some of you were quite happy to reveal that you played for United. If somebody was looking, it wouldn't take much work on the internet to find out where United under-15s play and go and visit the ground. If you've also posted your photograph, they then can identify you. All this seems like simple and like easy, but it means a lot. It shows like how cautious you need to be about stuff like this. So are you fairly confident that people looking at your profiles are only the people that you've invited to look? Or do you allow anybody to look at your profile? Allow anyone? You allow anybody, yeah? yeah? It's a catch-22, really. If you don't give out much information, 
then people will be interested in you. If you give out information, people are interested in you, but then you're giving out information which is vital and personal. So I can understand the dilemma this, the students face. When you like go home, you're going to change, take like loads of personal stuff off. Um, I'm going to delete the friends that have added me and I've accepted and um, maybe like not really get to know them, but just delete them. The whole concept of it is they want to be part of this group because it's trendy. Um, and that's the, the, the biggest sort of uh, worry. Because of, uh, of wanting to fit in, wanting to use this technology, they are open to far more than when I was a girl. You know, um, this wasn't there. All the social network sites provide powerful tools which restrict the amount of personal information that's made available. But the level of knowledge about these tools, known as privacy or security settings, can be low amongst users. Dr Beecham's final experiment is testing how good the knowledge is with this group of Year 9s. If we've got a paper profile like this one, and this really, all this is, is a printed out copy of the sort of stuff that you were saying was all right, who would you be happy to give that to? Our friends. Your friends. Right. So, if I was to take all of these and throw them all out of the window... How happy would you feel about that? It wouldn't feel that good, because then people still walk around school and then it'll be on the floor, they'll be all on the floor, so people can still pick them up. So we don't think it's a good idea to um, cast our profile to the wind and let everybody look at it. So how can we control that then? Because there are good things about social networking sites. We don't want to frighten you to the point where you say, Ooh, I'm not going to use those anymore. There are good reasons for using them. But what we need to do is to use them in a safe way. So. How do we do that? That's what this next activity is about. What we're going to do is look at um, three different uh, social networking sites. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to look at the privacy settings on those sites and see if we can change them so that the profile would be far more protected. OK. Which fields have you actually decided are the important ones to to block then? Uh, the photos, the videos, education, work. Right, because all of those have got things that can have got information which might be able to identify you. Yeah. Right. So which ones are you happy for everybody to have a look at? Status, as in like if you're single or what, going out is really... OK. Um, and friends. Right. Uh, friends. Friends is a funny one. Um, what do you think about friends? What have you said about friends? You, who, who are you happy? Everyone, everyone. You're quite happy for everybody to know who your friends are. Do you think if somebody if, could track... Hanging around the group. Yeah. Now, let's say one of your friends isn't as good as you are, and one of your friends then allows themselves to be identified. Could they get at you by... Working, looking at who your friends are. Yeah. Is that possible? Do you think? Yeah. So, do you think maybe we ought we ought to? Yeah, yeah. I think maybe you're right. I think they were naive. They were aware of where the tools were and how to use them, but maybe weren't aware of the effect of using those tools and the fact that really to be safe, they need to be using them. Group down there. What did you try and change? The date of birth and tried to hide the second name. Right, and how easy was it? It was very easy. Very easy. After this session that we've had with all safety, I'm, I'm going to go back and look at my profiles that I've got, think about twice as in what I want and what I don't want, and then change privacy and everything. Hands up if you've looked at your security settings recently on your own profile. OK. Hands up if, when you get home tonight, you look at the security settings on your own profile. OK. You have to take it quite serious, because just like the simplest things, like your date of birth, your school, your photo, you can all be added together and some random person could come find you. In terms of other teachers across the country, if they saw this, especially ICT teachers, they might feel it's not as bad a problem as it is in our school. I think what they should do is run the same activities as we have. Um, activities are there, resources are there, it's quite clear doesn't take much to set up 
and see what the results are. Who thinks their social networking site is going to be more secure because of what they've learnt today? Thanks, guys. That's great. Stay safe. Online safety has been made a priority at Stocksbridge High School in Sheffield. It's one of the few schools in the country to appoint e-safety officers. David Kavanagh is one of two in the team. E-safety became a personal concern of mine when we were doing a filming unit with the Year 9s. One of the girls in the class asked if she could um, go onto her Zorpia site and grab a picture so she could have it as, as the front cover for her movie. So I said yes, of course. Uh, but the picture turned out to be this, uh, a photo of herself in a party dress, with, which left very little to the imagination. And I just, I almost fell through the floor and I thought, well, I need to sort of do something about this. Janine Walker, the school's other e-safety officer, runs regular assemblies on the subject. Morning, Year 7s. Put your hands up if you have the internet at home. So this morning, what I want to talk to you about is e-safety and how to be safe online. I want you to watch very carefully and see what message this gives out. The Year 7s watch a video made by the Child Exploitation Online Protection Group showing how a young boy could be trapped online. He's a keen footballer and a social network user praises his skills after he posts a video online. The boy is invited to come training. But the person he meets is not who he was expecting. It's a classic tactic of paedophiles. I don't think the students understand how little they actually do know. And you see them when they've watched the video back or they've listened to the speech or the assembly. They sat there and you can hear a pin drop. OK. Put your hand up if you've learnt something from those videos. If you can take something away from two videos that you've just watched, and make yourself a little bit safer at home and on the internet. I'd like to think back to yesterday's assembly in the morning. We had a really good presentation about internet safety. I'd like you to think about what you saw, and I'd like you to design some posters, not for yourselves, because I think you should have understood the message, but for year sixes to look at, to help them understand how they can be safe on the internet. We never run anything in isolation. We never just run a themed assembly and that is it. It is always complemented and follow on with worksheets, with information sheets, with evaluations. And that's the secret to getting it right, according to the leading agency promoting children's safety online. A one-off lesson on e-safety will not do anybody any good. You know, in the same way that you can have um, uh, a one-off lesson on road safety, you know, children will take it in and they'll forget about it within, you know, half an hour. It needs to run through all the lessons, so it doesn't always need to be a standalone lesson, you know, within a PHSC a curricula. So it's about having that thread of e-safety throughout all lessons. The Stay Safe Online message is promoted in PSHE lessons. And what we're going to be having a look at next is a website called Think You Know. It's got lots of information on that you can use about how to keep yourself safe, about the different chat sites, different messaging. And there are also some games on there that can help teach you. So type that in to the address bar at the top and have a look around the site for yourselves. I found assembly useful because um, I, at first I didn't know that there were so many people what went after boys as well as girls. When you've been playing game, multiplayer games on the internet, you've got to be just as safe as when you're using chat rooms or sending messages to each other, because you can talk to each other when you're playing games, and still, you don't know who each other are, do you? The school has a safe use of the internet policy. Rules are posted on the classroom walls, and pupils are reminded of them when using the internet. Today, the pupils are online as part of a science lesson. I want you to think about the normal rules that we need to follow when we're using the laptops and when we're using the internet. We have the rules that are in all of the rooms, they're also in your planners. But let me just remind you about what you need to do this morning. 
For nearly all of the question, I've directed you to a website. So that's the website that you should be using. Using ICT in a lesson other than ICT brings particular challenges, but it's such a useful tool that you know, the time that you expend, the time you spend looking through the websites and making sure they're safe and making sure they're accessible and usable to the students is, is usually time well spent. For some of the questions, you may need to search. And if you do need to search, you need to search for appropriate websites. I think the challenges that I faced about being a safety officer is staff really responding to change. It's something new and it's, it's breaking it down so that everybody has a really basic understanding of risks associated with online technology. New staff or teachers in training are briefed on the school's safe use of the internet policy. You probably have noticed in each classroom there's um, a responsible use with internet within the school. This is a, this is a, a policy that I wrote up that uh, it's just a list of um, do's and don'ts for each classroom. So if they'd received an email then early in the morning when they'd come in to do some work and, and it seemed like they were being bullied so they were upset about it and they came to you in a lesson. Who would you? Immediately see me, I would then make a note of it, make a note of the student, when it happened, who it was by, who sent it, and then I'd send it immediately then to Janine. And the e-safety officers also act as a point of contact for pupils who may have suffered from bullying online. I wore things. You know, I'm feeling a lot better because I know now it's all been sorted. And, like, um, I, I enjoy coming back to school because I didn't at one point. Well, it happened about three months ago. It started with name-calling at school and outside school. They're banging into me and saying that I did this to someone, saying that I called, like, someone names and stuff. But then I went home and went on my website and then I leave, like, nasty comments on my pictures or, like, just leaving me comments in general, just being nasty for no apparent reason. And I like got really scared because I thought if I told someone and I'll get bullied even more, I'll get like beat up or something. How long did you sit at home not telling anybody? Ages. And I mean, what ages. made you come and let somebody know? Because I know I done everything I can do, and my mom did everything she could do, and there needed to be something else, and I knew that would be school. I watched like like clips on like cyberbullying, and it really took it home to me because that's what's happening to me, and I shouldn't have to stand for it. So then we um, got told about people can go to, and one person called Miss Walker, and she was like head of bullying policy, and so uh, my head here, uh, Mrs. Dunton, I went to both of them and just sat them down and, and just talked to them, and then they started giving me options what to do, and if I didn't like it, I said no, I don't want to do that. And then they totally understood, and then they did it with me. I did what I wanted to do, and they just backed me up 100%. But much of children's online lives are led at home or away from school. Stocksbridge High School's e-safety team recognise that part of their job is to educate parents. Some of the information that I'm going to give you tonight might be a little bit gut-wrenching. It's reality, it's real, it's out there, it's happening. I believe in telling everybody exactly what's out there and telling how it should be told. It's no good fleeting round all the army we've got to go straight down the middle and approach it. I hope you take something away from tonight and I hope that it makes you a little bit more knowledgeable as parents to protect your children. We have a parents' information evening um, to make parents more aware because that's part of the problem. We can make the child as safe as anything in school using firewalls, using any filtering systems that we have, but it's when they get home that's the big danger. So we're informing parents, sort of hints and tips as how they can make the children safer and to make them aware initially also and, and then to give them um, strategies they can employ to, to make their computer safe at home. OK, our child uh, exploitation and online protection police squad did a uh, strategic overview in 2007 and found that one in four children that they surveyed had met up with an online stranger. Okay. okay, I don't want you to panic. I don't want you to go home from tonight and cut up the internet wire. <laughs> I don't want you to go and say, it's coming out, I'm logging us off, none of us is using it. It's a fantastic resource. It's just to make you more knowledgeable that these risks are out there. To be honest, it's a surprise because um, I work in IT. I'm quite leading edge IT in communication uh, and using the internet. And um, 
and I'm a very, very um, attentive and concerned and responsible parent of three young children, and so is my wife. So if I'm so clued up and so embroiled in all of that, how can I be so unaware of the risk that my children are in and even not appreciating how well the school is handling it as well. So I'm really pleased that I came along, really relieved that, um, that the school is ahead at this stage. Um, and um, really, I just, I hope that more schools get clued up into the same kind of program. And when it comes to these new digital waters, if a child falls into an area of the water that we maybe are not around to help pull them out at the time, Let's make sure we teach them how to swim. And that's what eSafety is about. It's about a combination of proper, appropriate safety measures that fit the age and stage of development of the child, but also that that child themselves can swim, that if, you know, Lord forbid, something really bad happens, they're not going to drown. To help teachers with the complex area of safety online, the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Group has produced a number of useful resources. The teachers' resources we've developed, we've developed with teachers themselves. So the lesson plans that go alongside the, the resources that you can access either through training or by downloading have been developed in conjunction with teachers themselves. So sh they should work in the classroom and they should help you deliver the objectives you're trying to deliver through those lesson plans. So that's just a really important point. This is not just about us as law enforcement saying this is right and wrong, this is about us collaborating with children and young people and with teachers themselves to develop something that hopefully works for them. You can find links to the CEOPS resources and other useful sites by visiting the Teachers TV website.